Hello everyone, it's Sarah. I'm still very happy to announce that currently I am at my very first computer science internship. I'm currently at month four out of 12 and I'm still feeling very grateful for this opportunity. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of my six month job search for my first internship. It was quite a rough journey and I'm going to be telling you everything starting from writing my first computer science resume all the way to getting rejected to an interview and then giving up but then getting an offer in April. So stay tuned for this journey. I knew that I wanted to be in my school's co-op program ever since I was in my first year. So for Ryerson University, the first time you're allowed to get an internship is to start in the May of your second year. So that would be the end of your second year. So I applied in my first year and ever since my first year I have been trying my best to prepare for getting internship at the end of my second year. So I was definitely prepared for a job search that would be around a year long. When I was in my first year, I never saw code before, so I still felt like I was still a beginner at coding, but now all of a sudden I had to present myself as a professional in the industry. I had to prove that I was ready to be professionally paid for something that I had a skill for. So it definitely took a lot of getting over my fears, all this imposter syndrome, whatever. I had to get rid of all that and present myself as a professional and as someone who is competent in my technical skills with computer science. Although I was quite excited to get started with writing this resume and going out there and starting a new chapter of my life, it was also quite scary because I felt as though I was worse than everyone at computer science. I thought that my GPA was low and that my projects were not that impressive. And when I saw all the other guys talking about all their qualifications, I just thought that there's just no way I could compete against that. So I had to start thinking of my strategy for approaching this job search. I thought that there's no way that I could present myself as a technical profile because it would be directly compared to someone else who has a similar resume to mine. So I had to try to make sure that my resume was different from the rest. And I had to make it my own, but also try to make it as impressive as possible. Up on the screen, I'll put a picture of my resume. So I went for a career change resume because I had a bunch of experience. I know that I didn't code in high school or had any internships before like some people did, but I knew I had some skills. I had soft skills, I had jobs before, and I knew that my grades were reasonable. So I put all of that on a resume. And even though my projects were not that impressive, in fact, all of my projects that were on my resume were from school projects, which I thought were fine, but definitely not so at the level of me creating my own software or me creating my own business sort of thing. But I put it there anyway, and I made my first resume, and it was done in December 2020, which is when I started to put my resume out to the world for the first time. At the beginning of January, I also prepared for interviews by writing down some answers in combination with making videos. I'll put a video here of one answer that I quite liked. I liked my answer to the question, walk me through your resume. I will walk you through the three jobs that I've had in the past. My first job was working as a math tutor in 2015. I was only given part-time in hours when I was a math tutor. So I took on the job as being a art camp assistant where for the first time I had to be a responsible adult for kids and that really taught me to grow up very fast. I then decided to work full time as a cashier. I wasn't sh quite sure what I wanted to do for university yet. 
but as I worked for as full time as a cashier for a few months, and that helped me a lot with building my professional um, demeanor. As I was working as a cashier, I dreamt of doing something else. They say a lot of people who work in retail have a dream job in mind, and I decided to study computer science afterward. And I'm so glad I saved this because I don't think there's a better way for me to answer it except for that moment right there. January was definitely my game time. I sent over a hundred resumes throughout January. I still am astonished at the amount of energy I had to craft a resume and have a cover letter for each and every company that I apply to. Not only did I send my resume out, but I also did a lot of networking. So I also attended networking events where I would present myself to recruiters and this was in the pandemic, of course. So networking consisted of going to networking events online. I knew that this would be good for me to keep going at this job search with as much energy as I could because this was something that I really wanted. I truly wanted to have my breakthrough in the computer science industry at this year. Another way I networked was also going on LinkedIn and finding recruiters to message and telling them about myself through messages as well. Now, a lot of my messages did not receive any replies. Also, a lot of the times I talked to recruiters in person, I was not what they were looking for. However, luckily in January, I did score one interview from one recruiter and I was very excited about this interview. I thought that this was my chance. So I went to this interview and I thought it went fairly well. It was definitely not a life-changing interview or the best inspirational interview of my life, but I thought it went well. Nothing particularly went wrong and I felt quite optimistic about this one. However, two weeks later, at the end of January, I did not receive a callback for this. I knew that this meant a rejection, but since I was full of motivation and all of this fury back in January, I was still quite optimistic about my chance to get an offer. February was a big month of networking for me. Since I got my first interview through going to a networking event and talking to a recruiter, I thought that I would land more interviews if I kept networking and keep talking to recruiters, which is so out of my element and out of my personality because I am a massive introvert and would rather not talk to anyone, but something in me just really wanted this so bad, really wanted this first internship, wanted this first co-op. So I just had to let go of all of that and I feel like maybe I even transformed into a whole new person after that. A new method of networking that I thought of was attending hackathons. I decided to sign up for my first two hackathons in February and so definitely February was quite a busy month for me because I was on a job search, I was studying for school, and in fact I took a heavy course load of six, which is one more course than the regular course load, so I was definitely busy. At this hackathon, I was also quite optimistic. I thought that maybe if I made an impressive project with my team, I would get the attention of recruiters and maybe they would want to hire me. But although I did have a ton of fun at this hackathon, unfortunately, I did not get the attention of any recruiters. But I did make genuine connections with my other classmates and the other people who were also job searching. So that was definitely a fulfilling part of networking for me, was making genuine connections to other people in the same situation as me trying to look for an internship. I remember one time I talked to someone just once and they told me that they can feel my passion for tech. And that was so rewarding for me that someone could feel that I am passionate about something after only talking to them once. And that was a great lesson. If you are truly passionate about something, other people can feel it.
March was the hardest month. I felt burnout and I felt like quitting almost every single day in March. I was so angry and so upset that I was putting in all this effort and getting no callbacks. At this point, I fully accepted that the interview that I had gotten back in January resulted in a rejection. I felt pessimistic about my job search. I felt like I would not succeed and that I would fail this year. I remember being so jealous of all the other people who had finished their job search and were freely studying for their midterms, but for me, on top of studying for my midterms, I had to go through this mundane job search where every single day I was sending in my resume, talking to recruiters, and saying the exact same thing every single time. People were telling me to change my approach, to change my resume, but I had no energy left. I felt so burned out. This is all I had, and I knew I was presenting my true self and didn't find a need to change it. March was hard, but what helped me get through March was definitely the support of my family and friends. So if you supported me during this time, know that it meant a lot, and it still does mean a lot to me right now. At the end of March, I fully quit my job search. I told all of my friends, I told all of my family, including emailing the COBA advisors that I did not want to continue with this job search anymore. It was definitely wrecking havoc on my mental health. I was sick of doing the same thing every day. My days were so mundane. Uh, it was ruining my grades because I had no time to study because I was trying to prepare for interviews and doing all of this job searching on top of my studies. So ultimately I decided to tell everyone I quit and this 2021 job search was done for and we are going to pick up back to where we started in 2022. I truly believed that I was not ready for an internship. In April, I sent about one application a week, which is definitely not enough if you're on a job search. I remember when I was full-time job searching, I tried to send about five high-quality applications a day. I did the usual when I sent out these applications. I sent about two, I'm pretty sure I sent two within the whole entire April. So I followed these three steps when I sent out these two applications. The first step is to message the recruiter on LinkedIn about a job posting that they are in charge of. I wasn't trying to be uh, desperate at all. In all of my messages to recruiters, I just tried my best to make a genuine connection to them and say that I saw this job posting and it looks quite interesting or that I saw something interesting on their profile or that I know them from another connection. Step two is to make a cover letter. I had a standard format for cover letters. What I did is in my first paragraph, I would tell them about the specific role and I would put stuff about their mission statement and what they're all for. And then at the end, I would put all of my qualifications down for why I deserve this job. Cover letters took a very short amount of time at the beginning of my job search back in January. I remember it took about 15 minutes to make one. But for this one, since I was so sick of making, this was probably my, I don't know, maybe my 150th cover letter. But this cover letter took two hours to make just because I was so burned out. And then step three is to put everything together, put my resume, my cover letter, and my university transcript all onto one package, rename it, and send it off to the recruiter or the job posting. A few days later, after I sent out this last application, the recruiter called me for an interview. And you'd expect me to feel very excited 
And of course, I did try my best to act excited because I was definitely very grateful that this recruiter called me for an interview. But inside, I felt so low. I felt so pessimistic. I knew that I wasn't ready. I mean, well, at least I felt as though I was not ready for an internship. After all, my first interview was a failure and ended in rejection. I had a feeling that this interview would have the same result as well. I try my best to stay optimistic about this one. I try to practice and rehearse for this interview and try to be excited, but also the whole entire time before the day came for this interview, I just felt like I was wasting my time because I felt like this was just not going to end well. I did not want to get too excited about this interview, but anyways, I still got up for the interview on a Monday morning with my dampened heart from the rejection I got in January, from the burnout I was experiencing in March. I had to gather all of my interview questions and rehearse again after quitting my job search for a whole entire two weeks and remembering all of my answers again. I got all of my anger and all of my resentment from my massive six month job search and I showed up for this interview on a Monday morning. This interview was about one hour long. I don't remember much about what I said exactly, but a vivid memory that I do remember was meeting the director and meeting the team for the first time. And I just remember how happy I felt just to meet them for the first time. After this interview, the recruiter called me to congratulate me on getting an offer. And I actually could not believe it. I thought that maybe she called the wrong person, who knows? And I actually did not tell anybody that I got an offer until a week later, just in case she called the wrong person. I was definitely feeling like an overwhelming mess at this point when she called me because I already told everybody I'm quitting my job search. I already planned out my summer to have no internship and now I have an internship, so... It was quite in a confusing mess at this point. I was also... I'm studying for finals, so I was also having the stress of studying for my final exams, trying to recover from my midterms. So truly, April was a huge plot twist, a huge amount of events that were all contrasting from each other, but luckily, this was good news. And I fully accepted by the time it was the end of April, that I got an offer to be a product owner at Sodi for Software Bugs and right now that is still my job and that concludes the end of my six month job search for my first internship. I hope you all enjoy this video and hopefully there's going to be more in the future. Thank you for listening to my story. Goodbye!